from a gym that, that, that was gone 25 years ago. But look at this. And uh, Bill, you created that. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart for changing yeah. all of our lives. And that's I appreciate it. it. Woo! say that the reason that I think the reason the gym worked the way it did was because I never felt like I was the owner um, I knew that the membership if, if without members you don't have a gym so I always looked at it like the gym belonged to everybody you know we didn't have to police put weights away all of us now train in different places and every freaking place you go nobody put shit back nobody can read uh, so when I, when I closed the gym at night, 10 or 11 o'clock, the gym looked just like it did all day long and, and in the morning first thing. It was always perfect and I, it was a testament to how good we were as a group. What I wanted to say is um, I remember being six years old and uh, my mom taking me to Gold Sunrise and uh, you know I was too young to know anything about working out. And, uh, I remember that one day everyone was like, who's that guy? Who, who's the guy over there? Who's the guy? And he was wearing a sweatshirt and sweatpants. And uh, it was Bill. And people were like, who is that guy? You know, he's a monster. And the word got out he was opening a gym down the street, which was Body and Power. So most of all the people from Gold Sunrise went over to Body and Power. Gold Sunrise shut down. <laughs> so he shut Gold Sunrise down. Back in those days, back in those days, Gold's gym was yes. not ever getting shut down. Gold's gym was the place, you know? <laughs> so, no camera shut down Gold's, so uh, that's a good story. Yeah, yeah. And I remember being at Body and Power, you know, seven, eight, nine years old, and, you know, playing with my little He-Man dolls, and then one day, I looked up, and I'm like, wait a minute. Like, there's actually real He-Man walking around this gym. <laughs> And so then I started like really analyzing and watching everybody and watching the guys and um, you know I noticed the, 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 the bigger individuals were everyone looked up to them and you know the girls talked to them and you know Bill had the you know the sports car and the, you know so all this as a little kid I would take this in you know and I was pretty much uh, I don't know if I was destined or I was pretty much screwed because this is where I was going to go there was no no way in the world I wasn't going to be a bodybuilder after seeing all this, you know. And so uh, I remember, um, you know, Bill saying I could train there anytime I wanted for free for the rest of my life. And, um, you know, when I was 16, he sat me down and had the, the bodybuilder talk, you know, you know, what it really involves, you know, and this and this. And it was, it's awesome, you know, to be able to have someone who has that knowledge sit down and tell you everything about it, you know, and, and give me all that education at an early age. And I remember him helping me with posing, you know, and so, it was a it was a more it was a great experience you know being in that environment and back in those days you know gyms were completely different you know it was it was a, it was a cult and um, being in the gyms back day everybody trained hard everyone was competing it was just a different time and I wish I could have enjoyed that time being older you know because I was literally a body power from I think maybe 11 to 16. And, uh, you yeah, know, think about that those, those are for some pretty informative. Well, videos. yeah, I mean, that's <laughs> pretty much, yeah, I mean, <laughs> being there, you know, it's, you know, it's pretty much made me go where I went in my life. You know? A lot, I don't know how many of you guys remember Rich in the gym, but, you know, which was quiet. <laughs> he, all he did, he stayed quiet and he watched. <laughs> now, he didn't spend a lot of time talking, he spent a lot of time watching how everybody did things. Oh, so yeah. Could yeah. be more proud. Oh, yeah. Could yeah. be more proud. Yeah. Yeah. I, remember, I remember guys would come from different states to come train with you. Yeah. You know, and every time I'd sit and watch, I remember one time I was watching, you and Francois were getting ready for the cow. And you, yeah, guys, yeah. you guys were training arms together. Yeah. And it was you two training arms. Like if someone had a video camera and could have videotaped that, you know? It was like I just sat and watched the whole workout. You guys training arms. It was pretty, it was pretty insane. Yeah, that was awesome. I have video from 89. But yeah, the 88 uh, venture was my first time after having knee surgery. I've been out for a couple of years and I got way too heavy. Yeah, way too light. Francois should have won the cow that year. Came in second to what, Dave Stevens? Rick Stevens. Rick Stevens. Oh, Rick Stevenson. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> the day I decided to stop on him. Yeah, that was an eight. Yeah. It'll do that to you. Well, Steve O'Brien told me, he goes, well, you were better, but it was his time because he was the for a while. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Yeah, the yeah. charity. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, wait a minute. If you're the best that day, that's the day you win. Exactly. Right. And that's how we all feel. I mean, again, I think we all share the same thing. The passion, the passion doesn't circumvent. We never, the honor that's involved. You know, yeah. 
first and foremost, you, you got you know, your words at the end of the day, that's all you got left. And uh, I was always mad because we all thought, you know, Francois could have gone the distance like you guys have. And, yeah. And, well, but if he would have competed one better. more year, he would have. <laughs> right, right. He would have given one more year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To you. But he was done. Are you saying it's too late? <laughs> <laughs> here in Folsom and I see this big huge guy driving a ten speed bike. I was like, oh my god, who the hell is that? You didn't have a license then, right? No. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, about a year later I joined the 24 hour fitness and I saw him. I approached him and I said, looks like you know one or two things about bodybuilding. What do you think? Can you take a look at me? So he looked at me, I was about 165 pounds. He said, I said, do you think I should compete or should I wait a couple more years? He goes, Greg, if you got that bodybuilder mentality, you're never going to be big enough. You should be starting right now. So I competed my first show with his help, with his coaching and posing. Matter of fact, when I was posing, somebody after the show approached me and said, did Bill Cameron teach you how to pose? <laughs> So anyway, after, you know, we won our first show, basically, and then after that I started competing in NPC. In 2002, with again Bill's help, I won the California State title, and then in 2009, I won the USA and earned my pro card. So I want to thank Bill. I don't know if Bill wasn't in my corner, if I never met Bill, I could have, I don't know if I could have made it as far as I did. But I want to thank Bill for all the help over the years. He was like a big brother and a, like a father figure to me. So.